So Deviate sent me my brand new Claymore, their enduro bike, and it is wonderful. They sent it in parts, I put it together, and it is fantastic. I asked them to send me the bike in bits because I really, really enjoy the process of putting a bike together. It makes it feel really custom, even though they're just bits that everyone else can buy. I really get some satisfaction of greasing each bolt perfectly and tightening each part exactly how it was supposed to be tightened. Feels like it's your bike once you do that, once you put it together yourself. But they really did send me everything in parts and I'm pretty competent at fettling with bikes, but this is how the wheels came. A bunch of spokes, hubs and rims. I don't even know anyone who's built their own wheels. As far as I was concerned, it was some dark art that only either robots or old school mechanics could do. But I got the best hubs, the best rims, the best spokes. I put the rest of the bike together. I should build the wheels, right? So in this episode, we're going to see how long it takes me to put together a set of wheels. Hopefully they stay together and I don't die. This is day one, hour zero. Okay, here's the script. I want to build these wheels, but I do not want to shell out for a wheel truing stand, which costs almost as much as the wheels themselves because I'm probably going to do this like once every five years, maybe, if this goes well. I also want the only resource I use to be the internet. No books or expensive courses. Free, accessible information only. So the question is, can you build a set of wheels with just a spoke nipple driver and a YouTube how-to video? Let's find out. All this user manual says is danger. Read the user manual. Useless. Right, what are these? I don't know what I'm doing. Oh. Pick up one spoke from the pile on your right side. To start out, I just followed along with the video. It seemed simple enough. One, two, three, four spoke holes to the right. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Mass. Correct word for this is faffy. This is this, 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 this a faff. Despite looking extremely complicated, once the concept is broken down, lacing a wheel is a pretty straightforward process. Just follow the pattern. God damn it, they just fell back out. Over this one, over this one, and under this one, skip a hole and go there. You know what, this is actually quite good fun. It's, it's kind of the same thing as solving a Rubik's Cube, like you're slowly putting it together, except that if you get it wrong, you die. It's really fun when something actually starts to look like the thing you set out to make. And this looks like a wheel now. This actually looks like a wheel now, look. All the spokes are hilariously loose, but Here's an interesting piece of trivia for you. A bike wheel is a tensegrity, like this table here. A tensegrity is a structure where components that are purely in tension can support a compressive load. This table is supported purely by these cables here, which normally can support no compressive load. But arranged in this configuration, they can be really strong. It's really counterintuitive, but as I press downwards, the cables are stretched out to support the load. And a bike wheel is just like that. The spokes are practically useless under compression, they buckle almost immediately. But when the hub is suspended by spokes, the load is supported by the spokes in tension above the hub. And that's pretty cool, right? The next day I wanted to lace the front wheel without consulting the video to show that I've learned something. And you know what? It was a piece of cake. All right, these two fully built, fully trued, tried and tested wheels. Let's ride. <laughs> I tightened the spokes on both wheels to what felt like half tension and then stuck them on the bike and hoped that they were rammed. Threw it out of the box, let's have a look. They're not looking good. Oh dear.
Jesus Christ. Oh, oh, it's like an inch. It's at this point you'd want a truing stand. You'd put the wheel in and it would accurately tell you where it is off from the hub, both laterally, that's side to side bobble, and radially, that's where it's not round. I didn't have that, but what I did have was a roll of masking tape. My thinking here was that if I can get the rim equidistant from the tape all the way round, it would be true, right? Yeah, it needs to go on this side. So, truing the wheel is pretty simple in principle. If the wheel wobbles to the left, tighten the spokes on the right, and it'll pull the rim over, and vice versa. It's a lot around there, right? Next, I used the same idea, but to check if the wheel was actually circular, or that the rim is the same height from the hub all the way around. If the rim was higher at some point or touching the tape, I tightened the spokes in that area to bring it closer to the hub. Nah, that is, that is as close to perfect as I think I will ever get. That's good enough for me. So far, my cheap ass methods seem to be working. The wheel seems straight and round. But the whole thing was off to one side. It wasn't dished correctly. Here, you really want a dishing tool, this bow shaped device, which I also don't have. So I decided to use more tape, a table, and a cardboard box. I could see that the rim was higher on the drive side. So I tightened the spokes on one side of the wheel, which pulled the rim over. I actually ended up loosening spokes on the other side as well, as the whole wheel was starting to get really tight here. Once it was dished, I trued it once more using the tape, then repeated the process for the other wheel. I'm pretty happy with that. It's not absolutely dead true, but I've ridden worse. I was aiming for between 20 and 25 on this uh, tension meter here. Both wheels just perfectly ended up exactly where I was looking for. I didn't actually try to do that. I just threw them and they just ended up pretty much bang on. That seems like a win for me. Two gorgeous wheels built, but did they stay round? Seems round to me. I mean, admittedly, it's not very rough, but I built these using a YouTube video. If you're looking to get mountain bike wheels, honestly, give it a go building them yourself. The cheapo tape method works fine, and you get a real sense of satisfaction putting them together. Easy peasy, honestly. Also, this video is not sponsored by Deviate, but since I work closely with them, they are offering my viewers 5% off their new Claymore and Highlander 2 frames. So if you like the one I'm riding, or you want something a lot more trail oriented, use the code below to save yourself some cash. It is limited to 10 people though, so it's first come, first serve. A special thanks to my Patreon supporters for all the love. If you'd like to support the channel, check the link below, and I'll see you all next time. Peace.